book of Malachi, often pronounced Malachi in English, is one of the shortest books in the entire Tanakh, the Hebrew Bible, the Old Testament. It's actually only 55 verses long, and it's very easy to read all three chapters in just one sitting. And the book opens with the words, a pronouncement, the word of the Lord to Israel by the hand of Malachi. And I highlighted Malachi because this name, this word, is going to be very important for our understanding of this entire book. Now, the book of Malachi is one of the 12 of the 12 minor prophets. This group is actually 12 very short books that are all considered one book, one of the 24 books of the Hebrew Bible. And in the 12 minor prophets, Malachi is actually one of the three that are grouped as Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi. And these three, which appear at the end of the book, deal with the second temple period. That is the rebuilding of the temple in Jerusalem, as well as the service in that temple. The book of Malachi is important in the Christian tradition because it is actually the last book of the Old Testament. Here we're looking at the table of contents in the King James Bible, and as you can see, Malachi is the very last book in the Old Testament, and perhaps because of this placement, the prophecies in Malachi are especially seen as foreshadowing the coming of Jesus and the prophecies of the New Testament. In the Jewish tradition, Malachi is also important as an end because he represents the end of prophecy. As we read in the Talmud, after the last prophets, Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi died, the spirit of prophecy departed from Israel. There was no more prophecy in Israel. Now, there are many different topics in this short book, but a number of the prophecies in Malachi and the statements concern the priests, the priesthood, and the temple service, including tithing. So, for example, we read in Malachi 2, 7, For the lips of a priest guard knowledge, and men seek rulings from his mouth, for he is a messenger of the Lord of hosts. And this is really praising the priesthood. It's a very important position. The priest is a messenger of God himself. Now, there's a flip side to this esteem, is that when priests do not act appropriately, Malachi gets very bitter and very angry. He writes, quoting God, If only you would lock my temple doors, and not kindle fire on my altar to no purpose. I take no pleasure in you, said the Lord of hosts, and I will accept no offering from you. Meaning God does not want any sacrifices from the priests who do not act appropriately. And then in probably the most scathing critique, Malachi quoting God says, I will toss feces on your faces, the feces of your festival offerings, meaning the dung that was inside the animals to be brought to the temple itself are now being thrown into the priest's faces, a really bitter, bitter statement. And the end of the book of Malachi is perhaps the most famous part because there are two very intriguing statements. The first one is, be mindful of the teaching of my servant Moses, whom I charged at Chorev with laws and rules for all Israel. And so what we see here is that Malachi referencing what's probably the Torah itself, possibly the five books of Moses. And then in the very next verses, we get the statement, Behold, I will send you the prophet Elijah before the great and terrible day of the Lord comes. He will turn the hearts of parents to their children and the hearts of children to their parents so that I will not come and strike the land with a curse. And so what we see here is that Elijah, Eliyahu, Hanavi is going to come on a very important day and he is going to save the people themselves. Now, let's talk about the name Malachi. The name Malachi is actually a hypocharisticon. That's a really fancy word. It's only used in biblical and Semitic studies, and what it means is that it's a name that is also a sentence. So, for example, if we look at the name Yishmael, Ishmael, what it's actually composed of are two words, Yishma and El. And what it means is may God hear, or God will hear, or something of the sort. And when we look at the name Malachi, what we see is actually two words, Malach and the pronominal suffix E, and what it means is my messenger, meaning this person named Malachi is my messenger. And now if we return to that first verse of Malachi, which says a pronouncement, the word of the Lord to Israel by the hand of Malachi, this could also be understood as a pronouncement, the word of the Lord to Israel by the hand of my messenger. 
And if you ask yourself, wait, why would I want to understand the name Malachi in a literal sense as my messenger? So many Hebrew names are hypochristicons or hypochristica. So why would I want to understand it this way? And the answer is, well, actually, in Malachi itself, in the third chapter, the first verse, we see that, see, I am sending my messenger, Malachi, to prepare the way before me. And here is actually meant my messenger. It's not a proper name. So see, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me. And if Malachi Malachi in chapter 3 means my messenger, then perhaps Malachi in chapter 1 means my messenger. And if you say, wait, why would a prophet be called a messenger? Well, actually, in Haggai chapter 1, verse 13, we read, Then Haggai, the messenger of the Lord, spoke to the people with the Lord's message. So we see here that a prophet, Haggai, is actually called a malach, a messenger, so that it's not a far stretch to understand Malachi as my messenger. Now this would really turn the book of Malachi on its head. Instead of actually coming from a person named Malachi, it comes from an anonymous messenger. And you might ask, well, why would we want to interpret it that way? Why wouldn't we want to just say Malachi is this person's name? And the answer is we really know absolutely nothing about Malachi. There's no biographical information at all in this text. And this is in contrast to other prophets, such as Ezekiel. For example, we know that Ezekiel lived in Tel Aviv on the river of Kvar in Babylonia. We also know what years he prophesied. He prophesied for 22 years between approximately 593 BCE and 571 BCE. We also know he had a wife. We also know he had a house and so on and so forth. And so we have this idea of this person named Ezekiel, Yechezkel, whereas we know absolutely nothing about a person named Malachi. So it's possible to interpret it as just a general word meaning my messenger. And this has actually led to what I have called the Malachi hypothesis, meaning that the word Malachi is not a name, it means my messenger. And this is a very ancient idea, this isn't modern. For example, we see in the Talmud quoting Rabbi Yeshua ben Korcha from the 2nd century as saying, Malachi is Ezra. So that Malachi, my messenger, is Ezra from the book of Ezra. And this was became so popular that a few centuries later, the Targum Sudu Jonathan would translate the first verse of Malachi into Aramaic as follows. A pronouncement, the word of the Lord to Israel by the hand of my messenger named Ezra the scribe. And in an interesting turn of events, this Jewish tradition actually entered into the works of St. Jerome, who wrote in the preface to Malachi, the Hebrews think that Malachi is Ezra the priest, because everything contained in that book, this prophet also recalled. I mean, there's a lot of overlap between Malachi and Ezra, because both concern the Second Temple period, and both also look negatively upon intermarriage. And in the modern period, this idea was taken up again by Heinrich Ewald, and it was tweaked in his book, Prophetin des Alt in Bundes, and he wrote that we shall most likely never be able to discover the real name of the author. For Ewald, it couldn't have been Ezra, because Ezra was so famous, so if it was by Ezra, it would have definitely said it was by Ezra. And in the English language, this idea became very popular by Samuel Rolls Driver, who wrote in his commentary to the Minor Prophets in 1905 that originally the Book of Malachi, quote, had no author's name attached to it. It was an anonymous work. So these are the main ideas of the Malachi hypothesis, that we know nothing about this prophet named Malachi, the name Malach can be applied to a prophet, and the name Malachi literally means my messenger. So Malachi was probably a messenger of God. So what I would like to do now is offer a new reading of who Malachi, this messenger, this anonymous messenger, may have been. And at the outset, I want to emphasize that I am not saying that this is the way to read Malachi. What I am suggesting is that this is a possible way to read Malachi, meaning the text is so vague and so open for interpretation that what I'm about to offer can make a lot of sense. And what I would like to suggest is that Malachi was actually none other than Zechariah's angel, the angel in Zechariah. So let me explain. So I mentioned briefly that the three books, Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi, are often grouped together because they concern the same time period, but there are some deeper connections as well. So let's take again a look at Malachi 1.1, where we read, Masa davar Adonai el Yisrael biad Malachi, a pronouncement, the word of the Lord to Israel by the hand of quote-unquote Malachi. Now I want to focus on the words, Masa davar Adonai, a pronouncement, the words of the Lord. 
Now this phrase only appears two other times in the Hebrew Bible in the Tanakh, and those two other times are, lo and behold, the book of Zechariah. Zechariah chapter 9-1 and Zechariah chapter 12-1. So what we see here is that this phrase, Masa Devar Adonai, is actually a very Zecharian idea, a way of introducing things in the book of Zechariah. So that's our first interesting tidbit, that Malachi really mirrors the language of Zechariah, at least in the opening, at least in this heading. Now, I want to focus on the name Malachi, the word Malachi itself. Until now, we've been understanding Malachi as my messenger, quote-unquote, meaning a human messenger. But Malachi can also be my divine messenger, meaning my angel. And we actually see that in chapter 3, where Malachi says, See, I am sending my messenger, Malachi, to prepare the way before me, the messenger Malach of the covenant in whom you delight. So this divine messenger is going to bring upon new eras. So what we see here is that the word Malach can be understood as is often understood in, for example, Genesis, as an angel. For example, when the angel, the Malach, stops a Abraham from sacrificing his son Isaac, and then just a few chapters later, when Jacob sees the Malachim going up and down the ladder, the angels going up and down the ladder. So that really, Malachi doesn't have to mean my messenger, it can mean my angel. And if you're wondering, wait, why would it be my angel? Again, let's return to the book of Zechariah in the group of Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi. Just to point out, when I'm speaking of Zechariah here, I'm speaking of Zechariah from the Old Testament, the Tanakh, the Hebrew Bible, not the priest Zechariah from the book of Luke. Now, the book of Zechariah has a really interesting opening. Zechariah sees a man with different colored horses, and he doesn't know what to make of this man. So he asks his angel to explain what this all means, and this foreshadows throughout the book of Zechariah. Zechariah is going to be asking his angel to explain to him what these events and signs mean. So let's look at the first example, Zechariah 1.7. Then I said, what are these, my lord? The angel who talked with me, Hamala Chadover B, said to me, I will show you what they are. So Zechariah's angel is going to explain to him what they are. And we see even more angels in Zechariah 3.1, which says, He further showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and the accuser, in Hebrew, Hasatan, or often translated as the Satan, standing at his right to accuse him. And there are so many angels in Zechariah that it's even used as an allegory. So, for example, we read, The house of David shall be like God, like the angel of the Lord. Like the angel of the Lord. So all of this makes the book of Zechariah really fascinating. That's not to say that there aren't angels in the rest of the Tanakh in the Hebrew Bible, but what happens is that in Zechariah, the angels play a much more personable and much more important role, and that these angels actually make him much more of an angelic prophet than any of the other prophets. And if we actually just do a simple search in accordance, my Bible program, for the word Malach in every book in the Bible, what we see here is that one book in particular has the most density of this word, and that's Zechariah. And Zechariah has the word malach, angel or messenger, four out of every 1,000 words in the text, much more than any other book. And it's interesting that the book that comes closest to Zechariah is Malachi, our book itself. Now, with all of this knowledge, we can now return to the first verse of Malachi, which reads as follows, a pronouncement, the word of the Lord to Israel by the hand of Malachi. And we can now understand this as my angel or even Zechariah's angel. And so with this idea, what I think it means is we can now understand Malachi as really a continuation of Zechariah. And it's the angel of Zechariah speaking through what has traditionally been understood as a person named Malachi. Now, this itself raises a number of interesting questions that we can't really answer, well, such as, was Malachi originally part of the book of Zechariah, or was it just fashioned in the shape of Zechariah or something different? These we won't really know. But if it is correct, and actually Malachi is Zechariah's angel, this would put Malachi at the beginning of a really strong second temple period tradition of writing books through the eyes of angels, or at least dealing with angels in a much more serious way. So, for example, in my favorite passage from the book of Jubilees, what we have are the angels who came to visit Abraham, but it's not told from Abraham's perspective, it's told from their perspective. And they write, And on the new moon of the fourth month we appeared unto Abraham at the Oak of Mamre, and we talked with him, and we announced to him that a son would be given to 
him by Sarah, his wife. But this is just one example. There are many other cases of Second Temple works having angels in them, such as Tobit for Ezra and Enoch and so on and so forth. So in a certain way, what we can do is actually view Malachi in this tradition if this understanding is correct. Now, before we finish, I just want to point out to you where I got this idea that Malachi is Zechariah's angel, Zechariah's angel is Malachi. In the Anchor Bible Dictionary, under the entry Malachi, Andrew E. Hill writes, as a proper name, Malachi may be translated, my messenger or my angel. And he wants you to see those verses in Zechariah though context militates against the latter. So what Hill is saying is that really we can understand it as my messenger, but we shouldn't understand it as my angel. And what he probably means by the context is that in Malachi itself, there's nothing really angelic. There's no going up to heaven or anything like that. To the contrary, just the opposite. It's talking about priests and tithing and in marriage and so on and so forth. So it's really a very human kind of book. So in that sense, I get what Andrew E. Hill was saying is that there's nothing angelic about it. However, he actually brought up a really good point. If we understand as my angel, we now at least understand that first verse and the connections to Zechariah itself. So with all this in mind, we can now ask the final question, who was Malachi? So the first understanding, the traditional one, is that he was a man named Malachi, and we just know absolutely nothing about this person. The second understanding is that he was an anonymous prophet. He was a messenger, but he was a different prophet, and perhaps even he was Ezra. And then finally, the idea that I raised here was that it was Zechariah's angel. That we really do know a lot about this messenger. He's the messenger from Zechariah. He's the messenger who revealed things to Zechariah and prayed on behalf of Jerusalem, and so on and so forth. So we do get a nice idea of him. There's not much evidence for this, but that's also the reason why it's a theory. We don't know anything about Malachi himself, so we don't know anything about the person Malachi, and that's what enables a theory such as mine that perhaps he was not even a person. Perhaps Malachi was an angel, and this was the first book we know of that was actually attributed to an angel himself. Okay, that's it. Please let me know in the comments what you think about this idea, if it changes the way you view Malachi. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this entire issue. Also, I'd like to announce that we now have a Patreon page, so that if you are interested in supporting videos like this, you can give a little bit each month, and it will go a long way. So thank you very much, and I look forward to seeing you for the next video. If you enjoy this type of study, come join me and other great professors at biblicalculture.org where you can study the Bible and its cultural world.